Howdy, my name's Leon, and this is a quick introduction to AMForth, an implementation of the Forth programming language that runs on AT Mega microcontrollers. When I say runs on them, I really do mean that. The only thing my computer is doing is acting as a serial terminal that sends text to and receives text from uh, the microcontroller. In this case, the microcontroller is part of a small development board I put together. And in, more information on this board and basically everything that I talk about in this video can be found in a web page I put together. That's either directly below this video or linked to directly below this video. Anyhow, let's uh, fire up a serial terminal and connect to AMForth. So in this case, I'm using Minicom. All right, and we're in. Okay. So let's start off with a really simple example. Let us add 3 and 4 together. So we know 3 and 4 is 7, but the syntax here looks a little bit weird, right? We're used to having the plus sign between 3 and 4, not after 3 and 4. So what's going on here? So first, let's get our names right. So if the plus sign were between 3 and 4, that would be called infix notation. If the plus sign is after 3 and 4, that is called postfix notation, also known as reverse Polish notation or RPN. So why is it that fourth uses reverse Polish notation instead of the infix notation that we're more familiar with? And the answer is that it's actually fairly complicated for computers to interpret infix notation. Uh, the reason for this is you've got to worry about things like parentheses and order of operations. You know, you've got to multiply numbers together before you add them. And these are things which just don't come up with postfix notation. Um, you never have to worry about parentheses. You never have to worry about order of operations. And for this reason, it's a lot simpler for computers to understand. In fact, some people would argue it's a lot simpler for humans to understand, too. So let's really dive into what's going on here. 3, 4, plus dot. What, why does this work in fourth? Why does postfix notation work in fourth? So what I've opened up here is Starting Fourth by Leo Brody, uh, which is a great introductory programming book by any standard. And so let's dig into what's going on here. 3, 4, plus dot. So uh, when fourth sees number three, it recognizes that as an integer, and it hands it off to the number subroutine. Uh, and four subroutines are called words, and I'll stick with that terminology. And so here it's illustrated by a number runner. So the number runner takes the number three, and it dumps it over here on top of the stack. And the stack is sort of the main place that fourth uh, stores information, you know, numbers and pretty much anything else. And it's called a stack because it's basically an ordered pile of things, you know, just like a pile of papers or a pile of plates. So next up, fourth sees a four, recognizes an integer, number runner, then puts four on top of three. So now three is on, bo on the bottom of the stack, four is on top. Next up comes uh, the plus operator. You know, it eats the thing on top of the stack, then eats the next thing below that, chews them up and spits out the sum, in this case seven, and it puts that back on top of the stack. Finally, dot comes around and uh, prints out whatever's sitting on top of the stack, in this case, 7, and we see a 7 over here on our terminal. So that's sort of what's going on under the hood. And so my personal contribution to AMForth is a set of floating point number routines. So let's add together two floating point numbers and let's print out the result. And so this doesn't seem all that impressive, right? You know, a lot of programming languages have floating point numbers. Why, why is this cool? I think it's cool because, you know, first off, realize that AMForth, you know, right out of the box, you know, simply can't handle floating point numbers. It can only handle integers. If you put something like 2.5 or 3.2 e to the 1, you just get a, a string of question marks back. And what's really cool about this implementation is I didn't have to dig deep into the bowels of fourth and change things around to make it understand floating point numbers. This is built on top of uh, facilities that are built into the language. You know, fourth is meant to be very extensible like this. You can basically add any functionality you want. So, so far we've been using fourth interactively. Uh, let's compile something instead. And by compile, I don't mean compile to machine code. What fourth does is it compiles stuff to bytecode, which is basically what Java or Python do. And this isn't quite as fast as machine code, although it is very compact, but it, it's plenty fast for most purposes. So compilation, you start with a colon, and next you define the, or you type the word that you want to define, or the name of the word. So in this case, we're gonna define hello, and you probably see where this is going. You know, it's illegal to not 
you know, have a hello world example when you're teaching programming and I don't want to be arrested. So there we go, hello. Now let's try calling it and bam, it does exactly what we want it to do. Now let's try a slightly more complicated example. Let's define a word which prints out the first n numbers, where n is whatever is sitting on top of the stack. We'll call this word count, and I'll make a comment over here. So anything inside of parentheses uh, are comments, and that's of course because fourth doesn't need to use uh, parentheses for mathematics. And this is a very standard form of comment. It says that it expects one thing on the stack to begin with, which we've named n, and afterwards it's not going to leave anything behind on the stack. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put 0 on top of the stack. So we've got n on the bottom, 0 on the top. Next I'm going to start a do loop. Uh, this would be called a for loop in, program in languages like C. And what this does is it takes the first two numbers on the stack and uses them as the upper and lower bounds. Then inside the loop, uh, i takes the current index of the loop and drops it on the stack. Doc prints that out. Let's put a carriage return in there. Now we end the loop with the loop word and the definition with a semicolon. Excellent. So now let's try printing out the first 10 numbers. This works exactly the, what, uh, the way we expected it to. So finally, let's give another example of fourths extensibility. You know, let's say that you simply cannot wrap your head around postfix notation. You simply must have infix notation. So let's define a word that can add two numbers together, two floating point numbers together, using infix notation. We'll call this word f plus. And I'm not really going to say why this works. You, you've got to have a deeper understanding of am fourth that I'm going to be able to convey in this short video. So let me just define it. Let me make sure I defined it correctly. f plus parse name to float drop. Ooh, I don't want two drops. f plus. All right, that looks good. So let's try it out. Let's try adding 3.5 to 2.7 and print out the result. It does exactly what we want it to. So how is it that the syntax of fourth is basically up to you. Why can we do this? The reason for this is basically everything you see, you know, count, do, i, dot, cr, loop, these are all subroutines, they're all words. And so if you want to create your own syntax, you simply create your own subroutine. And you can make basically any syntax you want out of that. And of course this is a mixed blessing. You can screw this up and create unintelligible code. However, if you stick to standard fourth programming practices, I think you'll find that this is a very powerful tool. Anyhow, I hope this has piqued your interest in AM fourth. If it has, please check out the webpage I've put together. I think it should have some good information for you. Thank you for listening.